Hi, this is Martha Moody. Um, we are going to continue on week two, part two, on page 12. Um, previously, we have talked about the addition and subtraction of polynomials. In this section, we're going to talk about the multiplication of polynomials. Again, please refer to your lecture notes for the corresponding page numbers in your textbook. Um, this method that we've had is actually one that we've already used. So it's going to just be using things that we've had to date um, in the manner that we're going to use them. So for method one, we all we want to do is we're going to have a, a multiply by a monomial. That means one term, and we just use the distributive property. So in this example, there's one term out front, and then inside the parentheses, there are multiple terms. We're just going to go ahead and use the distributive property and take what's on the outside and multiply it by each and every term that's inside the parentheses. So it's going to be like a times b plus a times c. If these terms inside the group, the polynomials, were expanded, we would just take the one on the outside and mul multiply it by each one of the terms inside this polynomial group. So it would be a times b plus a times c plus a times d, etc. So what we're going to do is to multiply two terms. You first multiply their coefficients, and then you multiply their variables. When you multiply the variables, if the variables are the same letter, then we add their exponents together. So in this example, we have 4x on the outside. Inside the parentheses, we have two terms in this polynomial. So we're going to have two multiplications. The first one is going to be 4x times x, and I made that a 1x here. And the second one then is going to be plus 4x times the negative 3. You can write it out if you want to, but if you're um, starting to get good at doing things in your head, you can just go ahead and write the answer down. So 4 times 1 is 4. x times x, remember there's a 1 up in the air, so we're using um, the product property. And we're going to add those exponents together, so we get an x squared. On um, the right-hand side, we have 4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12, and there's only 1x. So our answer is going to be 4x squared minus 12x. In example 2, in this one, we have one term on the outside and 3 inside. So we're going to have three multiplications. We're going to take the 7x by each one of these terms inside this polynomial grouping. So it's going to be 7x times x squared plus 7x times minus 3x plus 7x times the minus 5. So I have it written out here so that you can go ahead and see that. I went ahead and I gave everybody a coefficient if they didn't have one, and I gave everybody an exponent if they didn't have one. So we're going to go through then and do the multiplication. 7 times 1 is 7. x to the first times x to the second. We add those exponents together and get x to the third. On this middle grouping, we have 7 times negative 3 for negative 21, and x times x is x squared. Over here, we have 7 times negative 5, which is minus 35, and there's only 1x. So you can leave your answer in this form that it is here, or you can go ahead and um, change that to where it's 7x to the third minus 21x squared minus 35x. Um, Example 3 is one where the term out in front is a 2xy. We have three terms inside, so we're going to have 2xy times the first term, which is 3x to the second. We're going to have 2xy times the second term, which is minus 2x. And then we're going to have 2xy times the last term, which is a negative 1. When we do our multiplication here, 2 times 3 is 6. We have an x here and an x squared here. Adding their exponents, we get an x to the third power. And there's only one y, so we bring that along. Then we go to our next grouping. We have 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. 
We have an x here and an x here. When we multiply those, we get an x squared. And there's only one y, so we go ahead and bring that down. And then on the last grouping, we have 2xy times negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And it gives us negative 2xy for our answer. Again, you can leave it like it is here on the second line, or you can get rid of that plus and minus and just have the minus sign in between them. Example 4 is um, another example where we have one term on the outside, 3 inside. So it's going to be 2x times the 3x plus 2x times the negative y plus 2x times the positive 5. And again, what I did, I gave everybody a coefficient over here, like on the minus y term, and I gave everybody a 1 for an exponent if it didn't have one. So 2 times 3 is 6, x times x is x squared. Over here, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and we just have an xy. There are no more x's or y's than the either one. And then finally, 2 times 5 is 10x. So again, you can leave your answer like that, or you can go ahead and get rid of that plus minus and make it just minus 2xy. Example 5 is one that looks a little bit more complicated, but actually we're just going to work from inside out. So I have the 2 highlighted here. We're going to multiply 2 times the grouping of x minus 3, so that will give us 2x minus 6. And then inside on the second line here, what I've done is I've added the x plus the 2x. Remember, when we add like terms together, we add their coefficients. So 1x plus 2x would be like having one apple plus two apples. We have three apples. So inside the square brackets, we have 3x minus 6. There's an imaginary 1 out here on the outside of that. So we can take the minus 1 times the 3x and get a minus 3x, and the minus 1 times a minus 6 and get a positive 6. Inside here now, we're going to go ahead and combine the 2x minus 3x. Again, they're like terms. So we're going to take 2 minus 3, which gives us minus 1, and the x's stay the same. And now we have a negative 3 on the outside. We have two terms inside. So we're going to use the distributive property again. Negative 3 times minus 1x gives us 3x. And negative 3 times positive 6 gives us negative 18. So our answer been ends up being 3x minus 18. So again, remember when you multiply variables that have the same base, the same letter, that you add those exponents together. The second method is going to involve a special case called FOIL, F-O-I-L. It's an acronym that stands for first, outer, inner, and last. The only time that this works is if you're multiplying two binomials. So it cannot be used for anything except when you have two terms times two terms. So for the acronym, the F in FOIL stands for first, which means the first term in each of the two binomials. Um, the O stands for the outer terms, so those are the two that are the farthest apart. The I stands for inner, the ones that are closest together. And then the L stands for last, the last term in each one of the binomials. So here I have an example, x plus 2 times x minus 3. So my first term here in x plus 2 is the x, and my first term over in the second group is also an x. So for our first term, we have x times x. On the outside of it, the two terms that are the farthest apart are the x and the negative 3. So we have the x times the negative 3. The two that are the closest together are the 2 and the x. And then finally, we have the last terms. So the last term in x plus 2 is a 2, and the last term in x minus 3 is a minus 3. So we have x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x, where we typically write the coefficient first. Then we have a 2x from the inner term, and we have a minus 6 for multiplying our last two. So again, to repeat, x is the first term in x plus 2. x is the first term in x minus 3. The outer terms are the two that are on the outside edges, the x and the negative 3. The inner terms are the two that are closest together, which is the 2 and x. And then the last term is the 2 is the last term in x plus 2. And minus 3 is the last term in x minus 3. Um, so what I'd like you to do is pause this at this point and try to work on um, these problems um, using FOIL. 
Um, if you've learned the long way before, you can use that, or if you want to go ahead and complete the rest of the section before working that, you can go ahead and do that. But I'd recommend trying to use FOIL right now in these problems. Um, there are five of them here. The answers are on the following page. And when you've completed them, go ahead and pick up on the next video, and I'll go through the answers on those.